Hey, Steve, how are you doing? Pleasure to meet you. My wife, Julia. Hi, Julia. My name is Jared. This is my wife, kids. Hello. Yeah. How are you? I said you, you own the farm and the home on the opposite side of the gully, is that correct? Yes. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Nice. I imagine all of them at one time yeah. was farm, right? Yeah. 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 Really? That explains the sand. Yeah. 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 That explains the sand. Easy digging. Yeah. 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 yeah it shut off, and you got to just close the door and open it. No, I'm at every meeting. Ah. <laughs> I'm at every meeting, so I know because yeah, that's the town. <laughs> that's the towns. This is a this is a cons a, a citizens. Trust but verify. Yeah. Alright, it's seven o'clock by my watch, so I'm gonna call the. The uh, meeting, uh, ZBA meeting, to order uh, tonight, and I'm going to have uh, the secretary read the application list of abutters, professionals, and confirmation of notice for the board. Um, 
conditional use meaning times, no passengers, no fuel, no lights, no buildings, no construction, um, and also to maintain the ability to maintain that quiet and peaceful feel that we do have here in Rollinsford that I think we all value. Okay, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt, but um, conditional use is a specific approval under different circumstances, you're asking for a variance. I think what you meant to say is that you're asking for a variance with conditions attached. Correct. Yes. Thank you. Yes, yeah, no, thank you. Um, and I, I want to be able to present in a way, um, you know, with, with the ability to say, hey, you know what, maybe we can work this out and work together. You know, I, I think we can all probably come here and say, hey, we came here for a conversation, not a confrontation, and I hope we can, you know, work that out. Um, so, uh, I'm transparent. Any questions, uh, I'll do my best to answer. And, you know, with getting uh, a letter from Mr. Roberts here, and also um, Shane and Lena Moore, um, I agree with most of that. I really do. I, I don't have a hard stop or hard question. I'm like, yeah, I get it. And I would say the same stuff. Um, so, it's to me, I just think that we can work harmon harmoniously um, and say, hey, can this work? Can change be... Um, can a little bit of change be recognized and accepted by the town and the citizens with conditions? But I'm not looking for conditional use. Pardon? Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, thank you for your presentation. Uh, I have one other question. Oh. Uh, and, and I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, I was asked, um, I think by uh, Mr. Clark, Tom Clark, if any of the board or any of the, um, the residents of Butters uh, they addressed they may want to come over to my house, and I said, you know, open door policy, no, you can come wherever, you don't have to call, no schedule, no nothing. Did anyone take advantage of, of that, stopping over and walking around? It's, I'm sorry, but it's really not appropriate of the applicant to question the board. It's the other way. Oh, God, it's new to me. Got it. <laughs> it's okay. I'll refrain. It's okay. All right. Okay, so let's start with questions from the board, and I'm going to go to uh, Ms. Cass. Do you have any questions for the applicant? Um, so just a few just to lay the groundwork. So you purchased the property in November of 2015. Correct. Okay. And um, in the deed there was a reference to some protective covenants. Correct. Okay. And I assume that you read those protective covenants. Correct. That reference that no aircraft, including but not limited to helicopters, shall be allowed and no landing area for such aircraft. Yes. Okay. So Correct. you did purchase the property with that understanding. Oh, yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Um, and, and to that note, um, in my application, the addendums that I, I attached were um, an FAA approved um, in the state of New Hampshire. And just to let everyone know, it, it's I didn't get that to come here. You have to start somewhere. Um, I could have started with the town and the neighbors and then gone to the FAA and the state. But I figured safety pretty much first. So that's why I got or applied and received FAA approval in State of New Hampshire approval as well. Okay. But the land, when you purchase the property, it, it is subject to protective covenants that yes. prohibit. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And so you were aware of that? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I have no other questions. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Ms. Vestasi, any questions? Okay. I am concerned about the noise level. Sure. And also, um, uh, flying over uh, area residents. Yeah. Yeah, I can, I can talk on that. Um, flying over populated area and noise. And those are two concerns as a resident of Rollinsford or anywhere, I would be concerned as well. Um, I can speak to studies that I've read on the internet about noise and decibels and also my own study as well. Um, and, you, you know, I can compare, hey, a helicopter from 500 feet above the ground is relevant to some kind of household or yard tool. So you'd actually... The data that I found, it's less infringing than maybe a wood chipper, a backpack blower, a chainsaw, common tools that I use in my home to maintain my home. Um, one thing that uh, those tools can run, and I use them, and I believe it's pretty necessary for the house or yard property that I have, as many of you other feel here. And those are continued use, whereas a hel uh, helicopter landing is four minutes, um, and takeoff is four minutes. So it's not like running for four hours. But the noise, absolutely. So from 500 feet away, it's going to be less impact noise than a chainsaw, a wood splitter of those things. And I have 
data to support that. The flying over a congested area, absolutely. Um, it's a no-no in aviation um, to be flying over a congested area. Helicopters are helicopters because they don't need runways to land. Um, but at the same time, you don't want to disturb livestock, residents, things of that nature. Um, so I feel with having the FAA come out in New Hampshire and say, hey, here's your approach, here's your angles, um, you can safely come in and out without disrupting at the um, elevation and becoming the altitude, I should say. I don't, I'm not able to see uh, Robinsburg as being congested, but you do have immediate neighbors. Yes, I do. Um, a butter's on, I think, three or four sides. And, and uh, butters that I've spoke to as well. So yes, you're right. The, the approach with the variable winds would be coming on, uh, I believe it stands probably the, um, but where you grow corn, I believe. Is that what okay. <coughs> Charlie Cabrera's is. Okay, Charlie's property. So there's no overflying of homes. Um, there's no overflying of livestock, horses, or anything like that. No overflying of homes. Correct. Okay, yeah, just trying to. You, helicopters, you deal with wind and variable winds and such. So I would not overfly homes to okay. any extent. So you would um, uh, fly to the field behind you? And up. Is that it? Well, so I, I have a map of variable winds and um, I think I, I supplied it, approach and departure. And to, to your question, different than an airplane, yes, helicopter can go up and then depart and then come in and come down. So disruption noise is would be a non-issue if you want to stay in decibel range. And I also would like to address, um, you know, any kind of... Um, fuel concerns, um, it's not a turbine, it's a piston-driven helicopter. Um, there's no um, jet fuel or anything like that. It's, you know, uh, you put maybe 95 octane in your car, 97. This takes 100 octane, so it's very similar. And the fuel tank is actually the size of a car, too, so it's not like we'll be dragging around 100 gallons of fuel or anything like that. Um, Where would the fuel be? There would be no fuel kept on site. The fuel would be in the helicopter only. Thank you. Yeah. Mr. Yuita. Yeah, um, I smiled when you said, when you asked if we had had an application. No, but now that you mention it, I think, you know, we know that there is a helicopter or has been in town. But the point I want to make for the record is, correct me if I'm wrong, but as a board, we're supposed to treat each one of these cases independently. And um, the concept of precedent and whatnot is not like in the, in the courts or okay. the legal world. This is a. We treat every one of these on their own. So I think some of us are aware that, yeah, there is a guy on the um, Clement Road. I don't know if he's still flying in or out, but it's re really not germane to tonight's. Oh, yeah, and I apologize case. for asking the board questions. That's a good question. Well, it's, it's, I just, and that's also good for the record to record yeah. or to reiterate that that is, in fact, what our ordinance and the vendor statute yeah. requires. I, I do want to reiterate, I'm looking for the ability with conditions voice to have the ability, whether it's X amount of times per year, I, I have and keep my helicopter at a hangar in Sanford, it's not at my house, and I will continue to do that. Um, so I'm looking for the ability to land and take off with conditions, whether it's time, amounts, things of that nature. But I have no questions. Okay. Right. Ms. Gaines? Yeah, so I just have uh, a few questions. Uh, this is located, this property is located in the residential district. Um, you explained, uh, you went through the application. I am not seeing a hardship criteria that you've addressed. Uh, I don't know if you want to try and uh, speak to that hardship. Sure, sure. I, I'd like to, I, I don't know if you had the opportunity to um, receive Stan, um, uh, Mr. Roberts' letter. Um, I don't know. If he it was on the to the board. Okay. Yeah. I just didn't know if you had the opportunity to read that about hardships and also uh, um, the moors as well. And I can do my best to. I don't have a copy of it here, but do my best to um, answer any questions you may have as far as a hardship and if the land is unique. Because I understand those are two highlighted points. Um, is the land unique? I find it is in the sense that it's surrounded by gullies on each side. Uh, wooded area, buffers, no flying homes. Um, I've spoke to my two immediate neighbors uh, of Butters, um, and 
they are, they are okay with this, they're not here, so that's kind of hearsay. Um, but hardship, and is it for my personal use only? And how is it hardship? Fair question. I started this meeting by saying I agree with 85% of, 90% of the um, feedback that I received. Um, hardship, to me, is an interesting word because it does it create a hardship in my life if I'm not granted this variance? And I would say no. It's a convenience, yes. Personally, yes. And that's why I'm here to not say, hey, black and white, I'm going to be coming in and out of here from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. three times a day, or say, hey, can we collectively work together as neighbors to see if this is something that we can work out? Um, so I don't know how the ZBA works, if it is black or if it's white. Um, but a hardship, it's a convenience. It would allow me to uh, work a little bit differently for, well, means for work, yes. Um, but is it a hardship? Honestly, I don't think, personally, yes, but <laughs> in any other one's eyes, I would say no. That's my last question. All right, thank you. Mr. Leach? I have no questions. All right. I think I'm going to ask for a couple questions for background. So, what type of helicopter is this? Sure. It's a Robinson R44. 44 means four place. I have the ability to take well, myself and three other passengers. Piston driven, gasoline. Um, it's not turbine. It's not MASH. It's not Magnum PI. Um, again, it's not the movies, but it's a piston driven helicopter that um, is. Is the most common helicopter in the United States. Okay. And how many passenger is this uh, helicopter? Besides me, I'm able to take three. Three. But I'm not asking to take passengers or tours or any of that stuff. Okay. And so, and up until now, where has the helicopter been kept? Sanford Airport. Okay. And why wouldn't you keep it, by the way, at the, the Rochester Airport, which is a lot closer? Uh, Sanford has something called an FBO. Um, has a restaurant there, has maintenance, so if you're ever to do maintenance on an aircraft, it's nice to keep it close to where you have it. Um, in Sanford, I went to flight school there a long time ago, so I have a network of, I would say, friends and colleagues um, in Sanford. Even though it's not the closest airport, Pease or uh, Skyhaven are both there, and even Littlebrook um, and, and Elliot, but I keep it in Sanford. Okay, all right, and um you, do you currently fly the helicopter to your residence in, in Rollinsford now? Um, well, I, the answer, to, well, I, I, can I refrain to the, the, the board and the audience here about the last two months and the effectiveness of, uh, not the effectiveness, the, um, the grievance that's been caused the last two months of flying in and out of my house? I mean, go, I'm not sure I understand what you're saying, but I may have to follow up. But go ahead and, and, and answer the question as you, as you. So the question to me was, have I been flying to my house? Yes, I have. Okay. All right, and, and so for how long have you been flying the helicopter to your house in Rome? So, um, I don't know, uh, four months maybe. And, and Tom okay. Clark did say when you got the first call that um, we need to go in front of the ZBA. And he says... However, between now and the time you meet the ZBA, which has been a couple months because I just missed it the month before, um, you can continue status quo of what you're doing. Okay, so four months ago you started uh, flying into the, your home. And why? And well, so if you owned the, the, the home since 2015, and how long have you owned the helicopter? Yeah, so I'll back up. I've been flying in um, for the last, on occasion, for the last five years. Okay. All right. More frequently in the last four or five months. I've owned the helicopter for uh, two or three months. All right. So you you had owned a helicopter before then? No, not personally. I I rented a helicopter. Okay. Um, prior to, to the, you know. Okay. All right. So uh, all right. And so prior to the last four to five months, approximately how many times a month? Uh, would you bring fly a helicopter into the year? Zero presence? to one. What's that? Zero to one. Zero to one. Okay. Uh, there have been a year that there's no helicopter activity. It might have been a month. There's three times a landing. Okay. And what's led to the increase of four to five times? Or, or I guess I should ask you. So the past four to five months, you've had an increase in the flight, 
And, and what would you say the average per month is of the last four to five months? Less than once a month. Less and my months. log books and FAA can back that up. Okay. And so, since you've been flying a helicopter onto your property, have you received any complaints from abutters or, or residents in Rawlinsford? No. I've received three calls, one from someone that lives on Woodlawn Ave, uh, the street, someone that lives in Stockholm Circle, and then um, someone on uh, Cottage Lane that it's fine. I reached out and said, hey, if it's a problem, please let me know. Um, it's for recreation. It's, I don't need to do this, but if it's a problem, please talk to me first. Call me, text me, email me, because um, I want to be neighborly, and I hope we can continue to be neighborly. Okay. And those three people in support. Hey, Jared, fine by me. Didn't even hear it, but again. I'm more concerned about the noise I make in my house with chainsaw, lawnmower, backpack blower, pressure washer. Okay. Um, going to the unnecessary hardship provision, one of the criteria is going to the special conditions of the property that distinguish your property from other properties in the area. That denial of variance would result in unnecessary hardship. And how would it result in unnecessary hardship to you? It would be, and I, I hate to say it, but it's the truth, it's convenience. Um, I don't feel a helicopter landing on a certain amount of times would infringe the quiet enjoyment of our neighborhood or our community. Um, that's why I keep saying conditional, but I don't know if that's the right word with the board, but with restrictions. Okay. Um, I guess it's no different than if I had a, um, a diesel truck that I need to drive for work and I need to start at 5 in the morning. I'd probably be here asking for the ZBA, um, hey, can I start my vehicle in the morning early? Um, and what is... Oh, I'm, I had a question, but I, I forgot I can't ask. Um, I, I was just guess I was curious about the, the noise ordinance in town and for the times, but I can look that up myself. So I would I would um, <coughs> put it in that column of uh, you know you know of course I wouldn't fly a helicopter at six or seven in the morning, but uh, a diesel truck starting up to warm up before someone goes to work. Another ask for the variance is, is granting the variance would not be contrary to the public interest. How would granting the variance um, how would it not be con uh, contrary to the public interest? Explain that to me. If you so, are you meaning not be contrary, meaning how would it not affect the public? Well, I mean, I don't know if I want to define the, the, the statutory language, but uh, it's your burden to, to prove it in your case tonight. Um, And how would, uh, I guess I'll phrase it this way, uh, describe it for me this way, how would the variance, granted variance, be in the interest of the public? I don't believe it has a negative impact with conditions on the public, just as a diesel truck was started early in the morning. Um, I'll make sure people live in Rollinsford for a reason. I live in Rollinsford for a reason. I want to maintain that um, small town feel. It will fit something that a lot of charm. Okay. Another, another, uh, issue is if the variance were granted, the spirits, spirit of the ordinance would be observed because, so the ordinance prohibits a private airport, so how would yeah. the, how would granting you the variance uh, uphold the spirit of the ordinance? Sure. The word that sticks out there is airport. Um, I think there's a connotation that an airport's an airport. I'm not looking to do that. I'm looking for the ability um, with a certain limited with feedback from the town or the abutters. Um, but to answer your question, I'm trying not to skirt around that. That's not my intent. But I don't think it would really negatively impact the butters or the uh, folks of Rollinsford. Okay. Um, another factor is granting the variance would do substantial justice. Why would granting the variance do substantial justice? I believe it would. For me personally, and again, I think this is for me personally, it would it would grant substantial justice because it would allow me to be more effective in my work. Okay. Which I use 
Hey, here's a helicopter for my work. And going to number four, if the variance were granted, the values of the surrounding property would not be diminished. Correct. Um, how, how is it that you base the belief that the surrounding property would not be diminished? Sure. There's no structures, there's no lighting, there's nothing. This is something, if granted, can be taken away. So there's no impact, there's no altercations of any land, no fencing, none of that stuff. Okay, thank you. All right, um, I'm now going to turn a few questions and uh, comments from the public. You have a better turnout than normal, very pleased with that. Um, and so when uh, I'll make sure everyone gets to be heard. Um, before you uh, comment, uh, perhaps uh, raise a hand or something, please state your uh, name and address. Uh, thank you. I'm opening up to the public, public hearing. Yeah. <coughs> Shane Please, Moores sir. for Cottage Lane. I'm sorry, what you saying again? Shane Moores for okay. Cottage Lane. So my wife and I do oppose the uh, request for variance. I mean, we uh, we had heard the helicopter over time come in, and I believe it was your father-in-law, is that correct, that used to fly in previously? Years ago, yes. Yeah, so we have heard it. Uh, we usually, we have air conditioning, so in the summertime our windows are closed. So it's not like we have windows open. And it is loud, and it is disturbing. And now it would obviously be more frequent than it was before. So it is something we're looking. We chose specifically chose where we live based on the protective covenants, based on wanting a quiet uh, residential area to live in, and that's what we want to maintain. I, so I, it's as simple I, as that. I, I, can I address Shane? Yes. Uh, no. <laughs> Not at the moment. Oh, okay. And Chair, will give an opportunity for you to rebut. After the public vote. Understood. All right, anyone else? Can I ask a question of this question or of this comment? Oh. I believe that's appropriate, yes. It's pretty simple. Yes. When you bought your property, were you aware that this activity was going on? No, we bought our property yeah. uh, back in 1998, so well before uh, Mr. Trayer purchased his property. Anyone else uh, like to make a public comment? Uh, Mr. Roberts. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, I feel a little odd uh, outstanding, but it's okay if I sit? That's, that's okay. fine. Uh, uh, 130 Roberts Road, uh, with my wife, Julia. Uh, we are not technical abutters, but we are in the vicinity, obviously. Uh, the Cottage Lane property used to be part of the farm, the family farm. Uh, first, I applaud Jared and his wife particularly Jared for your candor. I appreciate that. Uh, so it's good to hear that view of things. And welcome to the neighborhood, by the way, five or six years later. Uh, but my viewpoint on behalf of my wife uh, is the legal viewpoint. Uh, and so I've gone through the five factors that's in the submission that I provided. Uh, and as the board knows, uh, Jared would have to satisfy each of the five factors in order to have a variance. Uh, I don't think any of the five have been satisfied, but it only takes one. Uh, and while I can sympathize with your desire to have the helicopter, um, I think that it's not appropriate in that particular area uh, for a number of reasons. First and foremost, the covenants. I, mean, um, I think the board could be doing you a favor if the variance is denied because then if you were to engage in the helicopter operation you could be subject to a lawsuit by one of your neighbors to enforce the protective covenants and if you lose that suit you get whacked with attorney's fees so you don't want to do that um, so that's that's a concern the covenants are not the board's jurisdiction but it does play a role because it established the nature of that neighborhood um, in fact, I hadn't recalled this, but when I looked at the covenants a couple of yesterday, I guess, uh, I realized I helped draft those. Uh, and it's you know, my signature on all the notary things. Uh, so I worked with Mr. Connolly, who did the development back in 94, I guess, uh, on drafting those. And they're there for a reason. They're there for just what you know, Shane and Linda said. They, they want a quiet neighborhood. So, um, you know, again, I appreciate the convenience, um, you know, I know Eric's got 
projects all over the place, right? So, uh, but this isn't the place for a helicopter, unfortunately. So I would just stand on the submission that I uh, provided to the board in terms of each of the five elements have not been met um, and ask that the variance be denied. All right, thank you, Mr. Roberts. Uh, anybody else in the public want to comment? Can I make another comment in addition to the one I previously made? I don't see one out. Um, I actually uh, am an enthusiast of aviation, so I certainly don't have anything against it. When I was a young man, I actually flew with my father. My father was a private pilot, had his own plane for a number of years, although it wasn't a helicopter. But we flew out of an Air Force, obviously didn't have a private landing strip. So it wasn't really a hardship for us when my father wanted to go flying and he wanted to take me with him. He took us to the airport. We went flying. and. We landed and drove home. So it certainly wasn't any kind of a hardship. It was 15, 20 minutes of driving each way. So, okay. Well, thank you. Uh, anybody else? All right. Not seeing any. Um, going to uh, close the. Okay. If you want to give the applicant an opportunity to rebut. Oh, yes, that's right. Yep, please. Please, Mr. Um, to address uh, Mr. Roberts, I, I put this in kind of three couple of buckets, right? Where do you start? And you have town ordinance, you have uh, restricted covenants, you have approvals from the state, you have approvals from the FAA. So there's no really good place to start. But my, my three things that stuck out is I don't know how um, Eric, my employer, has any relevance to this. Um, so I'm not sure why we address that. Noise, if it's noise, which 100% I can, and if I could show you by decimal readings that noise is no impact, negative impact, more so than a chainsaw, a weed whacker, things of that nature, um, I would love the ability to do that. Secondly, is the covenants, 100% agree, right? And looking at the covenants, the second page of it says prohibited uses are in ground pools. We have in ground pools. So, and I'm not saying, hey, we're going to pick apart this stuff. And I also understand that you can change covenants with four to five votes. So I put these into buckets, right? And say, hey, there's no reason wrapping all my neighbor's doors and asking them to sign a pro Jared Langley's helicopter here unless they talk with the town. There's no reason to talk with the town. Without. So I'm doing it in buckets here. But I, I guess um, for those, uh, Mr. Roberts, the, you know, the noise, the error, and the covenants, a little bit questionable. But I, I came to this meeting and I said, hey, I agree with 9% of what you guys say. I live in Wallingsford, that small town feel. I don't feel like landing a helicopter is going to be an infringement on noise any more so than a weed whacker, things that run continuously. Um, and I can address safety if that's it as well. Um, but I, I appreciate, and I appreciate, and I came in here saying, hey, I'm an open book, right? Come to my house, I'm going to be transparent, and I appreciate your concerns because I have them too, and I do have them. You know, so I, I do appreciate that, Mr. Roberts, and, and uh, I'm glad you're an aviation enthusiast. You know, uh, differences, airplanes and helicopters, it's like apples and orchards, but they have that aviation, so, yeah. All right, thank you, Mr. Trayer. Um, all right, so I'm going to uh, close the public hearing portion of the meeting, and does anyone from the board have any further comments or questions? Uh, Mrs. Stassi. Um, on uh, page two of the application, uh, 3B, um, that you have, I would like the police department, fire department, any other department in the town, that you could volunteer the helicopter services. And um, I'm very concerned about uh, insurance coverage. Yeah. Um, it's always that. Just in case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Who's I'm gonna, you know, doing it? <laughs> and, and uh, I'm glad you asked a good question. And I can address it. Um, you know, it's I'm looking for with conditionals with the town. Say, hey, can we maybe try this out? I, I may never land in my house. I might land there if it's permitted. To answer your questions, two two part insurance. I'm 100 percent covered. Liability, haul. When you're flying helicopters you're insured. More so than you'd want to be in any other uh, aircraft. Your order wing is different than airplanes. So insurance, 
if I were to crash, whether it's in a field or someone's house, if I flew over someone's house, I'd be insured for more than the house. Secondly, however this meeting or the decision turns out, I, I would hope the town of Rollinsford would think that I'm a phone call away if there was a need for volunteer, for charity, for search and rescue, for area surveillance. I want to be communal um, and utilize, when I spoke with the chief, he says, you know, Jared, it's, uh, he says, if there's ever an, uh, an asset to the town that we can utilize, we'd be happy to. And there's no pressure. They say, hey, I'm, I'm here if there's any of our need. Um, my father-in-law grew up, or actually lived in a very small town, and uh, he, he volunteered his helicopter services. He's a helicopter pilot as well. For 30 years, the town of Paulus, search and rescue, fire department, and they utilized them uh, quite often. And they made some arrests, and whether it's finding drove patches or finding two lost kids in the mountains, things of that nature. And so whatever this meeting, whatever it turns out, I just hope you can take away that if there's a need in Rollinsburg in the Bunny community, um, it's all volunteer and I'm right around the corner. And my helicopter's in Sanford, 20 minutes. All right, thank you. Uh, all right, so moving on, uh, I think we're about ready to go into deliberations. I, I think in terms of the state of the case, we know what, what this is about. Um, the, uh, Mr. Trey is thinking of variants uh, to have a private airport. Um, is not permitted. Uh, I think maybe what I'd like to do is uh, go around and have uh, each um, member work in the <coughs> deliberation stage uh, give their uh, overview of perhaps the, the application and in particular uh, discuss if um, you think that the, the five, discuss each of the five criteria uh, in your discussion, if you don't mind. So, do you mind if I put you on the spot, Ms. Hass? I don't start mind, Mr. Yeah. Hansman. Yes, <laughs> that's <laughs> um, I had some notes, um, and I do apologize, Mr. Roberts, I did not get a chance to read your letter because I was working, so I was, I, I, you're, you're I haven't you're read lost. it. You're lost. There are some <laughs> I can tell. It's, um, but you do go through the, uh, the, the criteria, so I'll just go with, for myself, uh, the variance will not be contrary to the public interest, um, in my view, and what you've presented, Mr. Chair, this evening, and um, from the letters we've received from um, abutters and residents, um, requesting that we um, deny the variance that they are in opposition. So, to me, that criteria hasn't been met. Um, the spirit of the ordinance is observed. Um, I think that speaks for itself. It, it, it's, it's, it's not observed in granting uh, this. Um, substantial justice will be done. Um, I know in your mind it is. It's, it, you know, it's, it's something that you've been doing for a, a number of years. Um, We've noted that, that the protective covenants um, don't allow it. Mm -hmm. um, so the substantial justice where it, it may be justice for you, I, I don't think it's justice for the other residents in, in that subdivision who purchased the property knowing that there were protective covenants. Um, value of surrounding properties are not diminished, again, because of the protective covenants. You know, I, I put myself in that position. If I had purchased a home in Cottage Lane or built a home in Cottage Lane, knowing that they were subject to the protective covenants and knowing, you know, I would adhere to them and I would expect everyone else to adhere to them. And perhaps maybe the, the first course of action should have been to get the protective covenants amended. Um, if everyone, you know, if you could get a quorum of, of individuals in your um, development to have agreed. You said a, a lot of you have pools. You know, to me, there may have been grounds to have that right. edited out. And there's um, just one that has a pool. And I don't want to, um, I don't know if I'm allowed to talk. I don't want to point fingers. I just, no, and that's fine. But I don't want to point fingers, but yes. You know, the, the helicopter, the aviation aspect, yep. you know, um, a lot of us here, we love the rural factor of Rollinsford. Yeah. I myself have, have a very large parcel of land and have sufficient room to land a helicopter if I chose to do so or had that, 
had a helicopter. I don't. Um, I would be subject to coming before the board for a variance as well. Yeah. And, and I'm not subject to protective covenants. It's the protective covenants for me. Um, there's a value there. People yeah. buy properties with protective covenants knowing that they're, they're going to be adhered to. Um, literal enforcement of the provisions of the ordinance would result in unnecessary hardship. And, you know, according to um, your own admission, there is no hardship. This is a convenience. And um, I don't think that that's met either. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Cassa. Ms. Stasi, go through the we'll review and go through the five criteria. Okay. Um, first, not to be contrary to the public interest. Well, initially, when I was receiving uh, in emails, um, plus this evening's, um, you know, information of, say, a butters and those not exact a butters, um, you know, it's very concerning. And uh, to look at uh, how come and um, but it really did have um, substantial information and the spirit of uh, so just to, just to clarify Mrs. Sauce, I think you're saying that it um, granting the variance would be contrary to the public interest is that what you're saying? It would not be in the public interest? Correct. Okay, thank you. Correct. I'm sorry I'd like to fill this. <laughs> um, and then the spirit of the ordinance is observed. Um, I can't agree with that because um, you move there knowing, um, you know, what the uh, legalities were. And um, initially, I had to uh, to think if um, a building contractor. Just started his construction, and then afterwards, after we're getting a house or two built, he better get a permit. And I know that's an extreme, but it would just like with you knowing that, and um, it just I can't agree with uh, the spirit of the ordinance is observed. I can't. Um, and then substantial justice is done. And, um, and in this case also, um, I don't see it happening. And, um, you know, to keep the noise levels right, and I cannot compare it to local electric tools. It's uh, because when it's overhead, it's overhead. It's uh, and can be heard. Oh yes, it can be heard. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, Mrs. Sassi, I think you're saying substantial justice would not be done. done That's correct. Okay, great, That's great. That's correct. I don't know where my voice is. Okay. <laughs> Well, the values of the surrounding properties are not diminished. Well, that to me is uh, questionable because um, so many people, they want to know their uh, surroundings and, you know, the uh, old saying, location, location. It means a lot. And uh, you cannot say that having a a helicopter, even if it's not on a regular basis. Um, it's initially, um, I wouldn't be, uh, well, my opinion it doesn't matter, but it, I don't see it being good for uh, uh, property values. And that is a lovely area that uh, Cod Lane is, it really is. And um, I'm sure that you want to uh, keep it that way. The hardship provision? Okay. 
Um, hardship provision, I look at, again, um, the noise level, and even though um, you have said that uh, the fuel is not kept on your property, when a helicopter is, is there, it is that initial idea that there must be fuel. There are helicopter accidents. And um, so it it's really is a concern it's between um, uh, just the knowledge that, that large, you know, not a large helicopter, but a large equipment is there. And um, so to me, there would be hardship. There would be hardship for the Yes. So you're saying there would be hardship if the variants weren't granted, or you're saying that there would not be hardship if the variants were not? There, there is a hardship with it being granted. I see. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Ms. Uyida. I'm sorry. Did you, did you say hardship? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There was no I, I believe in the last, Sue, I believe what you're saying is that um, you are not finding hardship in not granting the variance. Am I right? Yes, it is a good one. Yeah. Because the applicant has the burden of hardship. Okay. All right, apologize for my phrasing my question. Mr. Yuya. I am so bad at interpreting these <clears throat> laws that I'm going to read them. <laughs> and I think this will help. It will certainly help me, and maybe someday I'll understand them better. For the various to be contrary to the public interest, it must unduly, into a marked degree, violate the basic zoning objectives of the zoning ordinance. Well, this is pretty easy. Not only does it violate the basic objectives, it violates the ordinance itself. That's a critical issue. So to me, that one clearly does not meet that criteria. And you know, as Mr. Trager's application um, provided much um, evidence contrary. The spirit of the zoning ordinance is observed again. However, when the ordinance contains a restriction against particular use of the land, the Board of Adjustment would violate the spirit and intent of the ordinance by allowing that use again. This is clearly not allowed by the ordinance. So, heck with the spirit, it doesn't meet the letter, so it certainly doesn't meet the spirit. Um, regarding substantial justice, the handbook goes on to say, any loss to the individual which is not outweighed by a gain to the general public is an injustice. And I don't believe Mr. Trey has shown, uh, again, nearly the um, proof um, for which he has the burden in that case. Regarding the property values, the handbook says, again, the burden is on the applicant to convince the CBA that it is more likely than not that the project will not decrease values, and he's shown virtually no um, evidence of that, even anecdotal or um, subjective or opinion. And then finally, the little, the, um, the hardship piece, um, I focus in on a couple words here. One of them is only when the, the character, some characteristic of a particular land in question makes it different from others can unnecessary hardship be claimed. So when you combine that with Mr. Trayer's uh, admission that it's, there's no personal hardship uh, to me, it clearly doesn't meet that criteria. So in summary, it meets none of the criteria. Um, and it's clearly a use that's not allowed. So not only I don't think we have the legal, you know, not just obligation, but even authority to, to grant it. All right, thank you. Uh, Ms. Mears. Yes, so I appreciate the applicant um, put conditions on the application. However, I do not feel that the applicant has met any of the five uh, variance criteria. Do you want me to know which one? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I suppose if you don't want to, no. <laughs> Well, just to clarify, just to clarify the public.
public and the board and the record, yeah. and in my mind, in reality, we're only required to show that one of the criteria, any one of the criteria are not met to be able to reject the variance. So I'm going to reverse myself and say that I think it, for consistency, yes, I'd like you to go through each one. Okay, the variance will not be contrary to the public interest. Um, the spirit of the ordinance has not been observed uh, for this application. Um, I do not believe that the applicant has shown substantial justice. Um, the values, the applicant has not shown that the values of surrounding properties are not diminished. Um, and um, enforcement uh, of the provisions of the ordinance will not result in the necessary hardship. Thank you. Mr. Leach, I know you're not a voting member tonight, but I'd still like to have your input. I, I don't know what I'm doing. Can he? He cannot. Well, oh, the <laughs> chair is... Uh, uh, All right. Sorry. Thank you very much. Okay. Sorry. No, no. Uh, I just... What? The people here volunteering their time, I'd like to try to... I understand that. All right. Uh, and I guess my view, Mr. Trayer, I mean, you've uh, given a nice presentation, um, and that a lovely family, and obviously... Love helicopters. I personally have no uh, uh, objection to helicopters in general. I think they're pretty cool. Um, having said that, um, I have to agree that uh, I don't think that this meets any of the five criteria. Um, I think that granting the, the variance would be contrary to the public interest. I think that the public interest in maintaining, uh, uh, that's a fairly, for Rollinsford standards, uh, densely populated area. Um, and I think that um, it would intrude upon the, the, the nature, the rural nature of that, of that area. And this is not a permitted use anywhere in Rollinsford. In terms of whether granting the uh, variance would, uh, would observe the spirit of the ordinance, uh, I, I don't think you met your burden on that. I, uh, I, again, looking at the weighing of uh, your desires versus the impact overall. I don't think you, you met that. Uh, substantial justice. Uh, I don't think substantial justice would be done by granting the variance. I think that uh, ordinances are an expression of the will of the people, um, of the town residents that is, and uh, I don't see um, a compelling reason why substantial justice would be done if we granted the variance. Uh, in regard to uh, the impact of granting the variance on the values of surrounding properties. Uh, I, do, I do agree with Mr. Yuita that it's your burden to prove, uh, demonstrate some evidence that it would not affect uh, surrounding property values. And I think that um, there are, given the lack of evidence, I don't think you met your burden there. And I think probably the hardest uh, thing for you to, to meet is uh, that literal enforcement of the ordinance would uh, result in necessary hardship. I know you discussed some aspects of your property that might lend itself to reducing uh, the noise, but I don't see any particular uh, unique characteristics of your property that indicate that um, there would be a necessary hardship if the variance were denied. And by your own admission, this is largely uh, a convenience to you. Um, and I do understand that weed whackers and chainsaws uh, can be loud. And it might, in fact, run for much longer than your helicopter. And I think the town could enact an ordinance potentially that said that we're not going to have weed whackers and chainsaws, but we don't have that ordinance, whereas we have an ordinance against uh, private airports. And so um, I guess that's my comment. Um, all right, so I think we might be ready to vote. Uh, any board member of any? Uh, yes. Um, after review of the application presented to the board, I feel that the applicant has not met any of the five uh, criteria and that this application be denied. Uh, ZBA case number 21.06. Okay. Um, and what I think I would like to do is, in terms of the vote, I'm sorry, can that was, you repeat that? Yeah, that was a motion. Yeah, yeah. very quickly said. <laughs> that was, that was, that was, that was, that was I would like to make a motion after review of the application presented to the board. I feel that the applicant has not met any of their uh, five criteria, and uh, I believe that this application should be denied. 
Mr. Clark? Um, I understand it's a motion and there hasn't been a second, but, but a point of order is true. Each individual um, criteria be voted on? So no, let's no, 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 no. no. Yes. Okay. No. Right. Yes. Can I speak? I don't know I don't, if you can at this uh, stage. Um, I'm going to speak loudly to my wife about that's the way you make an appeal is there's a vote for each of the five criteria. Sorry. I've never done it. I've never seen that either. Uh, so I'm going to, why don't you rephrase your um, motion. We'll see if it's a second. And I would say that in your motion you should address and, and, and you probably already did this, whether or not the five criteria have been met. Yeah. Um, I am making a motion after the review of the application presented to the board. I feel that that applicant has not met any of the five criteria. Um, and I vote to deny the application. Mr. Clark? Yeah. Is our Sorry. technical advisor... <laughs> um, <laughs> so you want us to go through each one? Each one. Uh, uh, you know... It pleased the court. <laughs> if you could um, just do that in this instant, and then we'll do research to see whether or not it's that's. I understand. It. I think that's what what made me think about it. The last variance, although it was granted, it wasn't intentional, etc. Um, the, the variance was granted without considering each of the individual criteria, and I think that has been the case right along. But it just occurred to me last time that I'm pretty sure each one has to be done. Yes. Um, and I think um, without doing that, you may give, not that you would, you may give the applicant grounds for appeal. Um, certainly grounds to request a rehearing, I think. <coughs> uh, I seem to remember. Uh, something from our former chair, uh, Mr. Putnam, discussing that. Um, so let's do it this way. Uh, I'm going to um, ask each member to vote. Um, I'm going to go through, and I think then at the end we'll make a, a, a general vote about uh, granting or denying. I'm going to ask each member to vote uh, whether or not, um, I'm going to read it, uh, Ms. Cass, how do you vote as to whether uh, the issue of granting the variance would not be contrary to the public interest? This one always gets me. <laughs> so I disagree. I think that the variance will be contrary to the public interest. Okay. Uh, Ms. Nastasi, how do you vote on that? Issue. I vote on the fact that it will be contrary to public interest. All right, Mr. Yuida. Well, just give me two seconds here. I think it's important that we distinguish between if we're going if you're gonna hold us to the task of voting to that level of detail, I think we need to understand whether the burden is on us to prove it doesn't meet the public interest or that is Case you see the difference? I think so. So my vote is that he has not shown proof of meeting that criteria, that his variance will not be contrary to the public. Ms. Mears? Uh, the granting the variance uh, uh, would be contrary to the and I also agree that um, the applicant has failed to demonstrate that granting the variance would not be contrary to the public interest. Ms. Cass, how do you vote on whether or not, um, whether granting, in granting the variance, the spirit of the ordinance would be observed? The applicant has met his burden of proof. Okay. Ms. Nastasi? 
the spirit of the ordinance has not been um, observed. That, are you saying that uh, the uh, applicant has not demonstrated that granting the variance would observe the spirit of the ordinance? Uh, correct. Okay. Uh, Mr. Uida. Yeah, I believe the granting this variance would violate the spirit of the ordinance. Okay. So they will therefore vote no on that criteria. Ms. Mayors? I vote to deny because granting the variance um, would be in spirit of the ordinance. And I find that um, that granting the um, variance would violate the, would not observe the spirit of the ordinance. Uh, Ms. Cass, uh, on the issue of, of whether or not substantial justice would be done by granting the variance, how do you vote? I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not sure what you're saying. We're on now justice. We're on three substantial justice? Yes. Again, the, the applicant hasn't met the burden of proof to establish that substanti substantial justice would be done. All right, Mrs. Stasi. Okay. The substantial justice would not be done, so I deny that right. very Mr. Uida? Um, yes, I, I agree that granting the variance Not meet the burden of substantial justice. Ms. Mayors? I vote to deny um, because substantial justice has not been done. And I also agree that uh, if the variance were granted, substantial justice would not be done. Uh, Ms. Cass, on the item four, whether or not granting the uh, variance would result in surrounding properties, the value of surrounding properties not being diminished. I vote to deny as I don't believe the applicant has met his burden of proof that the properties will not be diminished. Ms. Stasi? Okay, I deny with the fact that um, the properties, um, the applicant has not proved that properties would not be, values would not be diminished. Mrs. Uvita? I vote to deny the ordinance or the uh, variance for the same reason that he has not provided proof. Property values are not diminished. Ms. Mears? I vote to deny. Uh, I don't believe the applicant has proved that the values of surrounding properties are not diminished. And I also agree that um, the uh, applicant has not proven that granting the variance uh, that it would not result in the values of substantial pro surrounding properties being not being diminished. On this cast, the uh, issue of number five of hardship. I vote to deny as I don't feel the applicant has met his burden of proof that um, he meets the, the burden of unnecessary hardship. Uh, Ms. Stasi? Okay. Um, denying the fact that, um, that there would be a hardship. So um, um, he has not proved that uh, there would not be unnecessary hardship. Okay. Um, Mr. Uvita? I, I uh, will deny the variance based on the fact that he hasn't proven unnecessary hardship. Ms. Mears? I vote to deny because I do not believe the applicant has uh, proven unnecessary hardship. And I also vote to deny because I do not believe the applicant has proven that literal enforcement of the provisions of the ordinance would result in an unnecessary hardship. So I think now, uh, Ms. Mears, if you might want to uh, revisit your motion you were making earlier. After review of the application presented to the board, I feel the applicant has not met any of their five criteria, and I make a motion to deny the application. Is there a uh, second? Second. Okay. All right. Um, <coughs> all in favor of uh, deny? All right. All right. Sorry. Uh, Ms. Koss, on, on the outstanding present motion, how do you uh, vote? Agree. To deny. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Nastasi, on the motion, how do you vote? Agree to deny. All right, Mr. Uida, on the motion, how do you vote? I vote to deny the variance. And uh, Ms. Mears, on the motion, how do you uh, vote? I vote to deny the variance. And I also um, uh, agree and vote to deny the uh, variance. Uh, it's a 
unanimous decision. Thank you, Mr. Trayer. I'm sorry you were successful, but thank you for your presentation tonight. And uh, thank everyone who's uh, participated in, as a member of the public from attending. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry to meet you. It's a certain problem, but... Uh, Hey, it's a, my, my nine year old son on the way here. I was explaining to him what I was doing. He's like, Dad, you getting hammered. I said, well, it wasn't that bad, you know? Next time I'll break. I mean, it's okay, though. Yeah, you get hammered. So I just need to understand that I can never land at my property at any time. I haven't had a chance to read them. So, so hold on. We still have like two minutes. Two minutes to. Oh, is there a question yeah, You are not. You are all set. Oh, sorry. I don't know. Can I just ask a question? Yeah. Should he ask us or should he? I mean, ask can I ask question? a question? Can you get, I don't know. The, the board I can't give you legal just, advice, so no. I'm, I'm a little leery of... Uh, it's just a rule. Like, yeah. It could be to the building official. Right? Yes. Can we do it outside of the meeting? Yeah. We're... Sure. Why don't you hang around after the meeting? Okay. Oh, I don't want to get in trouble with anything. No, no, I just don't set my bounds with the questions. So. Okay. We'll be at home. You can stick oh. around and watch. It's boring stuff. <laughs> what? What are you doing? It's boring. Nothing. I'm bringing it in. Sit down. Nothing related to this case. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I do have a suggestion. Are you done with this case? Yes. Yeah. I mean, what most DBAs have is a uh, scorecard, and they've got you know, the members. And they have the five criteria in a, like a box. And did the applicant meet its burden on you know criteria one, two, three, four, five? And then each member said yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. Because the important part is on appeal, when a court gets this, they may find differently on one of the elements, but not the others. And then they're going to look to see what's the sum total of the vote. And so the scorecard is really handy both for applicant. Uh, people that are against it, and more important for the judge. So I just offer that. Thank you, Mr. Roberts. Yeah. Um, all right. So in terms of assigning the notice of decision, um, unless someone wants to shoot their hand up, I don't mind doing it. Uh, I'll do it more readily than last time. All right. I'll sign the decision to myself. Um, next on the agenda, on the agenda is approval of minutes from March 25th. It looks like 2021 and July 8th. 2021, as uh, folks have the opportunity to review the minutes and any, uh, any comments on them, or also entertain a motion to uh, approve them or disapprove. Uh, you can probably also like approve your notice of decision. Then I'll do my little bit. All right, so, uh, okay, all right, so. After the after the minutes, okay. So, uh, are we participating in the next meeting? I'm not a voting member tonight. All right, so. Your input is very I really appreciate it, sir. Do you want to, do we want to address the minutes, or we want to put it off, or what do we want to do? I think Andrew is still reviewing. Yeah, I have a All right, so we're going to continue that until the next meeting. Um, in terms of. The, I uh, obviously sent out the draft of the decision. decision. I, was, I was targeting getting that. I apologize. Andrew, did you review that? I'm just reading that now. Okay. All right. Because so this just came tonight as well. No, no, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I was working until the meeting. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Can we do a, uh, 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 internet vote? No. When's the deadline to approve those? They just have to be submitted by a certain date. Approval is, is pending. And I don't think that would really have much of an impact because you approved it. You yeah. approved the variant. Okay. Yeah. So it's going to be. Okay. Okay. And you're contesting it. That was my fault. And the in that case still has to go for the planning board. So Well the other thing is that the expectation is that there's thirty days between meetings, so okay. it's fine. Okay. Uh, are there any other business before the board? Can we approve them via it has to be a live vote. Okay. You can't make any decisions mm -hmm. over it. Okay. Okay. I mean, unless you're doing it. Is there 
any other business before us? I, I would like to figure out how we're going to address the um, our own procedural rules. I'm pretty sure make it pretty clear exactly what we need to do related to whether how, whether all five have to be addressed in the motion. Or I'm pretty sure though it says all, all five have to be addressed in the vote. But it's not my understanding that. Within the minutes, oh, yeah. you all no, comment on them yeah. in the deliberation. Exactly. That right. is the clarification. Mm -hmm. So if you so, were to go so. back okay. and the case challenged in court, that's okay. the evidence that everybody's opinion, what everybody's opinion was on each of the five criteria. I, I would like to say I've never seen it. She said when voting on the five variance criteria, different boards deal with it different ways. Some vote on each of the five criteria. Right. If one fails to pass, variance is denied. Others vote on the entire block in one vote. Neither is right or wrong. They may yield different results. Uh, now, I don't disagree, though, that it's wise that for, for, to address the five criteria at some point in the deliberation by, a, if not one member, you know, at least in total, all the members have touched on these. So that, that, do you remember that workshop that I sent you the link to? Yeah, so I so um, in that workshop, I think Madigan, whatever, so one of the, the people who presented it said on his ZBA board that he was a member of, they would go through and the chair would say on this, like how do you feel, basically what we did afterwards, mm -hmm. like this right. whole. So then you do have a recorded, like opinion, everybody's opinion on each of the. Maybe we should have a workshop to have them come in again. I mean, to be honest, it was, so it was just a procedural workshop okay. that they did, another procedural workshop that they did, that I wanted to go to, um, but I wasn't able to, but it, there's a recording of it. I mean, I think there's like resources online you know, that you can access just individually. And let me say, I apologize for throwing a monkey wrench in the works at the last minute. I, I mean, this is definitely something we should have, we should have addressed early on. And, and do we, did we approve the rules of procedure for the EPA? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. May I ask Ms. Kendall, what about the idea of bringing Mr. Radigan in for training? Is there funds for that for half an hour or an hour? Or? Um, not specifically designated, but I think the select board would support that. And, and, and do we have to make that an official request and vote on it, or is my speaking to you now enough to do that? Um, I would suggest that you vote to do that, because individually you can't really request sure. it since it's an expense, but if collectively you're requesting it, then the board would have more reason to consider it. In other words, if it's just one person, that might be handled differently than if you're asking somebody to come and address the board. Right. I'd like to research if there's a video on the Municipal Association website. I mean, I, mean, I can review send you the that. link to the latest procedural So Radigan is not only the provider of that training, but is he also a legal I, it was, I, Yeah, he is. I, and I don't know if it was Radigan who did it. It, it was Radigan. Was, no, but, the, the okay. municipal one the, okay. that we... Okay. I, I, I think that I, was I, a different one. So we wouldn't be getting the opinion of some other zoning folks. We'd be getting the Radigan. opinion of the lawyer. Yes, the okay. Municipal Association who puts these, the these workshops on. Right. And then we can integrate that into our procedure. Yep. I think that's really wise. That's right. All right, so what I think I'm hearing is that we don't want to bring, the feeling of the board is we don't want to bring Mr. Radigan in. We still want to do, look on. Well, why don't, why don't we do this? I will send you both, I will send everybody the links to the workshop that I went to before, that I sent you to before, but if anybody didn't see it. And this most current one, which was procedural, specifically procedural. Check those out. If we decide that we want more input, then maybe we can vote on the next meeting. And it sounds like we can go either way. We just need to definitively say each, each meeting we're going to do the five criteria and maybe having a table for you, John, with our names. And it's well, yes I, well I, did, no, yes I keep notes on that, but I guess I kept create a, I kept notes on that when I'll write the decision as to how everyone voted on that. So let me just make an argument against each of us trying to reiterate in our own words the complexity of those five <laughs> Yeah, and <laughs> yeah. Well, sure. I agree. Yeah. A, that doesn't yeah. help the public, and B, I think it under, often undermine our case because yeah. I am so careful to choose my words now because A, they're not like common sense to the average yeah, lay right. person, and B, um, I think uh, an applicant could construe that as confusion and um, it's just another avenue to provide some doubt. 
that I think we should try to open that. So do we have to read it, or can we just say on the first paragraph? Criteria I, one. I, I, I vote no. Right, I, I, deny. I, I deny. I don't think it, I, I say it doesn't meet it. Doesn't two, meet it. Yeah. It doesn't meet it. Okay. You know, it, or, I mean it, and you can list the criteria. Yeah, because it doesn't matter. I guess it does matter. To, you know, one or two. Point, but it's really one. I just need And that's just it, yeah. you know. Yeah. Well, and it seems subjective, too, because what you consider him not meeting in terms of, like, hardship, you might have a different opinion. Right. The more I read the handbook, the more I believe this to be, um, you know, so malleable and ill-defined that it just confuses the public and confuses the applicant. And the best place for the succinct alliteration of the five criteria and why they aren't met is in the summary decision, you know, in which you take the input from all of us and you you meld it into something that is as clear and succinct as we can make it. Uh, that's just my opinion. Yeah, okay. All right, so is there a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 aye.